So in the last video, you're introduced to me, E.R. Brown, and I tell you all about how I learned about archaeology and how there's such a thing as the archaeology of the Bible. And then I introduce you to some of the experts of the archaeology of the Bible. And then one of the experts, Marcella, she's all like, we don't uh, basically look at what's in the Bible and say, let's go out and find that. We see what's already there in the, what we find with archeological excavations. And then we start talking about archeological excavations and what that entails and what that looks like. And then at the end, one of the other experts, Dr. Davis, he says, You're not just looking for nice looking stuff. You're looking for how it means in their lives. All right, y'all good? Let's keep it going. We study culture and we study history. We are dealing with people, like that's honestly what it is. We're dealing with people of ancient times and we are looking through what remains of them. And that's only a small percentage of the culture. And so that's why I say we're studying material culture. If you don't have books written about it, or if it's not a living culture, uh, archeology span is that one field that looks at the material culture uh, the material remains of the culture. The more I learned about archaeology and really saw its benefits, it felt like I was drawn into this whole different world. A world where archaeology had allured others just like it had me. And just like that, I was all in on archaeology. So I went and got my bachelor's in ancient studies. Then I went on my first dig in Israel. And I followed that up by getting my master's in archeology span and biblical studies. But maybe studying the archeology span of the Bible was only a benefit to me. I started wondering, would studying the archeology span of the Bible be beneficial to anyone else? Do you think it would be beneficial or helpful? for us to talk about the archaeology of the Bible? Of course. I do think we should talk about archaeology Why? pertaining to the Bible. Because I think if we're going to talk about what Jesus is and what the Bible stands for, we should know placements, where he is, all that type of stuff. I think it would help a lot. It would open a lot of avenues in the Bible that we don't understand, that we could relate to. I think we need to know about it, though. It's a part of the, it's a part of it. It's a part of history. Why not know? I mean, one, it would help get the word out. You know, um, regardless of what you believe, don't believe anything, but just having some sort of truth, since that's what the people look for, you know, kind of, kind of solidify that. Uh, so I think that'd be a lot, uh, a lot important, um, especially in this day and age, with all the information that we have with technology and stuff, you know, so just adds a little bit, you know, to what we already, what we don't know. So to answer your question, yes. Yes. You know, we, you, we were you, you have from to know <laughs> where you come from. Right. And when we, you came from the dust. Yes, we came from dust the dust. you are and earth. dust you shall return. So why not study it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if people think we should be discussing the archaeology of the Bible, then why aren't we? I think sometimes some of the ch church are fearful of archaeology because they think, oh, this shows that our Bible is not true. This is because of docu-series like The Bible Unearth or the History Channel series Bible Secrets Revealed, both of which kind of use archaeology to challenge the validity of the Bible. The Bible does not stand on archaeology, like not at all. Period. Nothing that I would find in the archaeological record would ever, ever shake my faith in in what the Bible says, to be quite honest. The only archeological discovery that would cause me a problem as, as a believer would be if they proved to me that they found a crucifixion victim 30 AD, who was Jesus of Nazareth. Then I might as well give up and go to Vegas because there's no point in being a Christian. Sometimes you have things, somebody will come on and say, this shows the Bible's not true. And other archeologists will say, this shows the Bible is true. And it's just like, no, it's not doing that. It's the scholar who's doing that. The record is neutral. 
It's what you do with the, with the facts, what you do with the data. Whoever controls the interpretation of the data controls how it's said. I think the biggest misperception in the church when I think of archaeology, oh, you're out to prove the Bible. And it's just like, well, that, that's some of it there, but I'm there to illustrate the Bible. The Bible is an interpretation of history. It's a real one, it's a true one, but it's an interpretation of event. One of the worst mistakes we make is we say archaeology proves the Bible. It doesn't. It doesn't prove the Bible. Even if you prove the event, it doesn't prove the interpretation the Bible puts, puts on it. But what it does prove is that this is a real world. And so we can understand the text in a real place, in a real time, and therefore apply it to our own lives better. That's what archaeology can really do for biblical study. Strip away all the things we think we know and deal with what's real. Yes, the Bible is a historical book, but it's also a book of faith. And just kind of like any writing that you will find, no matter how objective they try to be, um, there's always going to be some kind of bias. Because the Bible comes out of a real world. It's not just a text that, that somebody created overnight in a, in a, on a mountaintop somewhere. It is a text that comes out of a real living world. And the writers assume you know that world. And we don't always understand what those biases or literary devices or anything like that are because it was written in an ancient time that we don't understand necessarily anymore. Archaeology, we're trying to reconstruct people's lives. And then I bring the Bible in and now I'm able to add to that picture. It's another tool to try to better understand that part of the world at that time. And you have this really cool um, collection of writings that go along with that. So let them tell their story as much as they can. And the places where they, they don't tell a story, let that be and just really work on the ones that you can you know, better understand. So the Bible is amazing. I mean, it really is. And I just want people to appreciate its value culturally and historically. And I get it, that's hard because we're so far removed from the Bible by time and by culture and even by geography. And what's crazier is that the Bible was written with the assumption that you do know the time and you do know the culture and you do know the geography. And that's what's great about archeology span is that archeology span fills in these tiny little holes and gaps that we don't have. And I know this is not something you have to know. I'm not saying you do. And I get it, it's not required unto salvation. It's just something that I thought was important to share just so you know. That's it? That's it. Good. <laughs> Will I get my solo now? You want your solo? And I... Kathleen. Yeah. <laughs> Will always love you. Yeah. Please get it. Please get it. Did you push stop? You didn't record that? Oh. <laughs>